So in the last episode, I shared how productivity can be something of an emotional crutch for me sometimes, um, but we all still need to get things done, right? Uh, we have things we need to do, we have things that we actually want to do, and then we have all the kind of self-care stuff that we know we should be doing. So today I wanted to share why I use a bullet journal to manage all of this and why it's had such a positive impact on my life and on my work and on my creativity and even on my ability to really take care of myself. Okay, since this is tea time, I first wanted to thank Carolyn for recommending this magnificent tea to me. This is the Tazo, what, I think you say Tazo, Tazo? Tazo Wild Sweet Orange. Um, and it's really good. It's very sweet and sort of um, tart at the same time. And uh, yeah, Wild Sweet Orange, it reminds me of somebody I know. So if you have a tea that you want to recommend to me, be sure to leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about more tea. Okay, so back to bullet journaling. Uh, I do love lists. I love a good to-do list. And I think if you're a busy person with a lot of responsibilities or a lot of hobbies, a lot of things that you do, it is really helpful to get everything kind of out of your head and into what productivity guru David Allen calls a trusted system. Uh, I find that really, really helpful. I've used a lot of different systems and apps over the years, and I still do. I really like digital tools and I use them, but there's something about an analog system like a bullet journal that just feels really different. It feels more like I'm creating something and it feels more like an art journal rather than just checking things off on a to-do list. So it feels a lot less like work. So today I'm gonna to walk you through my own journal just as an example of the kinds of things that you can do with a bullet journal and that might be helpful to you. So in the first section, I'm gonna talk about what a bullet journal is and what that term means and what it means to me. And then second, I'm gonna talk about my process for using it and how I set it up each month and what I actually do. And then third, I'll talk about what I put in it and that might give you some ideas. And then last, I'm gonna talk about some things that I've learned that have really helped me uh, keep from getting overwhelmed day to day when I use my journal. So first of all, when I came across the concept of bullet journaling many years ago, I completely rejected it. Uh, it just seemed like it was not for me, but it has gone in a lot of different directions since then and people have done a lot with it. So it's a little bit different from when I first discovered it. When I first encountered it, it seemed extremely complicated to me. It just seemed like there were a lot of rules and a lot of jargon and systems that I was having a hard time wrapping my head around. And since then, I've come to see this as kind of the original purest form of bullet journaling. If you want to learn more about that whole system, you can learn a lot at bulletjournal.com and I'll put a link in the description box below if you want to check that out. But in essence, it's a modular system. In that system, you have four main collections as they're called, and those collections are the index, the future log, the monthly log, and the daily log. And there's a whole system for how you use these collections with notes and bullets and tasks and events and there are different symbols that denote each of those things. Um, yeah, and like I said, it, it feels very complicated to me, it feels very heavy to me, but I know that a lot of people really love it. But when I first saw it, I was like, nope, definitely don't need more of that in my life. But then in the last few years, I started to come across these very artsy versions that people were doing with lots of fun color and cool layouts and really personalized lists and ways of doing things. And it seemed really fun and I was really intrigued by that. And that's when I learned that people were basically taking the things that they liked about having a modular journal and really customizing it for their own needs. And that was really inspiring to me. So I've been using my bullet journal for about a year now, and here's why I love it. Number one, it's analog. So I spend a lot of time looking at computers and devices, and having something that's tangible just gets my brain working in new ways. Number two, it helps me to reflect. 
Because of the way it's set up, I have regular check-ins with myself every day, every week, every month, and I just can't tell you how much I've learned about myself. I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Number three, it's fun and it's playful. I get to use markers and pens and practice lettering and just doodle. Number four, it doesn't feel like work. Unlike most productivity tools, I feel happy and excited to use it instead of just bogged down in a bunch of details. Number five, it's totally customizable. I change it up every month and I evolve it just depending on what I learn and what my needs are. And that's a really fun learning experience too. The basic idea with bullet journaling is that you have monthly pages and weekly or daily pages. You set up these pages more or less as you go. My own process is to sit down each month for about an hour with all my art supplies in a nice cozy little corner. Just take an hour out of my month. First, I review the previous month and I collect and sort of review that month. And then I set up my pages for the next month. Because I only work one month at a time, I can change what's in my journal every month, change the layout to something new, add stuff to it, whatever I want. It's just really flexible this way. I love that this gives me this monthly ritual of looking back at my life and then looking forward at the next month. It just helps me to be a lot more intentional about my time. Next, I'll show you exactly what goes on my monthly pages and on my weekly pages. So every month I sit down and I start a new month. The first thing I create is just a cover page for the month. I just write the month and I leave some room for drawing or doodling later on. Next, I create a page for a monthly plan. These are the things that I want to keep in mind throughout the month. And I evolved this over time, but right now I have a section for writing ways that I want to celebrate the current season that we're in. For me, this is a really great reminder to stop and smell the roses, so to speak, uh, no matter what month I'm in. I actually keep a Pinterest board with different ideas for celebrating each season. And when I sit down and do my journal each month, I'll reference that for ideas. So it'll help give me some inspiration to, I don't know, uh, make marmalade in the winter or plan a picnic in the summer. And I find that if I think about these things ahead of time, I'm a lot more likely to do them. Under that, I write a few intentions for the month and something I want to remember, maybe just a thought or a quote. And it's a little cheesy sometimes, but I don't mind being cheesy if it helps. On the next pages, I have a page for learnings for the month and for memories that I want to record. And this has been a really cool feature for me. So what I do is on my weekly pages, which are the pages that I use every day, day to day, just for my to-do lists, I have a little spot for memories that I want to record for that week, anything that comes to mind and stands out to me that week, and anything I've learned that week. And so I just see that all the time because these are the pages that I use every day. And then at the end of the month, when I'm doing my review of the previous month, I'll just collect those together into a couple lists, one for memories and one for learnings for that month. And the really cool part of this for me has been at the end of the year, I can look back at an entire year of things that I've learned and good memories that I've had. And that's been just a really powerful experience for me at the end of the year and really helps to kind of further ingrain the things that I've learned. So it might seem really complicated. It might seem like a lot of work, but because it's just part of the journal and it's there in front of me all the time, um, it's really not a lot of work. It's just this kind of gentle reminder day to day, every day to reflect a little bit more. Next up is my tracker. And this might seem like the most type A part of this whole journal, but hear me out because it's been a really good mental health tool for me. Every day for the month, I'll write down my satisfaction with that day on a scale of one to five. Um, and then on the right hand side, I'll just make a little note, maybe a one sentence little note about the day, about something that happened or about why I was satisfied or dissatisfied with that particular day. This has really helped me to notice patterns in my behavior and how they affect my mood day to day. And this has actually led to some pretty significant behavior change for me, like doing fewer things every day and really making time for things that are just purely fun, purely pleasurable things for me and really making those a priority in my life. I also track three daily habits that I'm trying to work on each month. 
So for this particular month, I was trying to do some writing every day, take a photo every day, and make some art every day. And I wasn't 100% successful at doing all of these things every single day for the month, and that is totally fine with me. Uh, I can always come back to them in the next month, or I can change it up and choose something new. Next we get to the weekly pages. So I create a spread for each week of the month with an area for each day. And then at the top, I have a space to write out what my ideal week looks like. And then I just leave some space around it to doodle if I want to. And I have a column or some kind of box for each day's to-do list. And then at the bottom, there's a little space for writing any learnings or memories that I can think of that week. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my daily to-do list in a minute. So stay tuned for that because I've learned a lot about how to manage those so that they're not quite so overwhelming. So what about all the stuff that doesn't really fit into a to-do list that just comes up all the time, like notes from a meeting or um, just some things that you want to remember or maybe notes from a book that you're reading or anything else that you want to jot down. So what I do for that is, uh, so I've got my monthly pages at the beginning of each month and then I've got my weekly layouts after that. And then I just will use the pages after that to take any random notes that I want to on any kind of subject. So that's sort of my free form area. And because I only set up one month at a time, I can use as many pages as I want just for any notes that I want to take throughout the month until the next month rolls around and I start a new month. So there's one more section that I want to talk about, which is an appendix area that I have at the back. And that's really just like my reference area for things that I want to refer back to over and over again. So I keep lists of mental health tools there that I can use whenever I feel stuck. I keep lists of things I want to sew, things I want to knit, things I want to make, things I need for the house, just kind of constantly evolving lists that I can go back to over and over again. All of that goes, just goes in the back of my journal in this appendix area. So finally, going back to the weekly pages, I just wanted to talk for a minute about my daily to-do lists. One thing I learned from tracking my satisfaction with each day on that one to five scale that I showed you in my tracker was that I was just trying to cram way too much stuff into each day and it was not making me happy. So I would just make these really, really long to-do lists and then not be able to finish everything, of course. And then at the end of the day, one, I would feel bad and then two, I wouldn't have done all of the things that I actually wanted to do and that make me feel good and that maybe are good for my long-term well-being because I was so focused on finishing the to-do list and you know conquering this list and getting all the things that were quote-unquote must-dos out of the way. So uh, I instituted some new policies for myself. So this is what I do now. At the top of my list, I'll put a maximum of three high priority items that I really want to get done that day. So these are usually work-related things, but they could also be things like I really want to clean out my closet on Saturday, or I really need to do the meal planning for the week on Sunday. So these will be one of my three high priority items at the top of my list, and I will put a little bubble next to each one, which I can fill in once that task is done. And then, I intersperse things that are my really want to do items. So these are my self care things or the things that just really make me feel good. Like I wanna bring some flowers into the house from the garden or I wanna bake cookies with a friend or um, anything like that. And for these, first of all, I'll put a little heart instead of a bubble and that just differentiates them from my high priority task oriented things and I'll allow myself to have as many of these fun things as I want. Um, as I've mentioned before, I have a problem with productivity and working too much, so this really helps me to balance it out. I can have as many of these things as I choose in a day. And then there are all the things that are just like the little tasks that you need to get done. They're not necessarily huge priorities, but they're things that are just gonna happen that day or that you need to do that day. And so these little things I'll put at the bottom of my to-do list and I'll also use bubbles for those but because they're visually separated from the high priority things and the fun things at the top uh, there's a little bit more 
uh, breathing room for me and I feel like okay maybe I'll get these things done maybe I won't get all of these things done but I've done the things that are really important to me the things at the top of my list and that's really been a game changer for me it's really helped me to see this long never-ending to-do list in a new way in kind of these really manageable chunks this has just really helped me to mentally separate what's important from everything else and just to be a lot more intentional about enjoying every day and it's it's really brought a lot more joy and a sense of ease into my life so that's it that's how i use my journal um, oh and one more thing if you're curious about the type of journal i use i'll link this one down below um, i really really love this journal it has a long german name that i'm sure i'll butcher if i try to pronounce so i'll just put it in the description box below but it's wonderful it comes in a bunch of different colors and it comes in different page styles like lined or blank or my favorite the dot grid i think that's great for drawing little boxes and things which i love it's also cool because the pages are numbered and a lot of people like to create an index for their bullet journal so they can easily find certain notes that are in it. I don't necessarily do that. I don't really find it necessary for me, but if you're somebody who likes doing that or who wants to do that, the pages are numbered so it makes it really, really easy. I've also used this gorgeous cloth bound version that I picked up from Shinola in Detroit. And they're a wonderful little company that makes some really beautiful journals too. And I even got this one embossed with my name at the store, which was really, really nice because nothing ever has my name on it. I also love these little pen holders that stick to the inside of your journal. And that way I always have my favorite pen with me, which is this inky black uh, pilot pen. And uh, you might notice some little tooth marks on it. And that's because uh, Winston hates this pen. He, he likes to bite it. Uh, we call it his arch nemesis. Anyway, that's all from me on bullet journaling, and I know it can seem a little bit over the top, but it can actually be really, really fun, and I think, for me, it's been a really enlightening process. You know, I've really learned a lot about myself in the last year doing it, and I've actually made some pretty significant changes to my life from what I've learned, so I'd encourage you to give it a try if it's something that it seems like might be helpful to you. Um, I think the thing that really made me interested in it a year ago after kind of rejecting it in the past was just recognizing that I could customize it and make it whatever I wanted it to be. I didn't have to follow all these rules if I didn't want to. Um, I could really do whatever I wanted with it and um, that is what really sparked my interest. So um, I think if you want to learn more about it, I will link in the description box below to some resources and some inspiration to kind of get you started. Uh, I think just seeing all the cool creative things that people do with their journals can be really, really inspiring and make it a lot more fun for you. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope that maybe you've gotten some ideas and want to give it a try um, and it sparks some creativity for you. So uh, if you like this video, let me know in the comments below and give it a like and uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and I will see you guys soon. Cheers. Winston. Oh boy. It's my wild sweet orange.